Big Cat Rescue in Tampa, Florida, is the largest accredited sanctuary devoted to big cats in the world. Over 100 lions, tigers, cougars, bobcats, and more have a permanent home here. Many were abused, abandoned, orphaned, or retired from performing acts. The sanctuary started in 1993 when founder Carol Baskin bought 56 bobcat and lynx kittens from a fur farm to save them from being turned into fur coats. Some of those are still here today, like bobcats Little Dove and Rain Dance, and Siberian lynx Natasha and Willow. Since the first cat arrived, over 200 have been rescued, each with their own story. Nikita was found in a crack house in Tennessee, owned by a drug dealer. Sasha not only had her claws removed, she was also defanged so the owner could charge people to take photos with her. The owner continued to operate even after having her USDA license revoked because it is simply not possible to have enough enforcement officers to ensure compliance with the laws. Alex, Cookie, and Freckles lived in filthy cages in this backyard in Mississippi. When the owner's business failed, he simply moved away, leaving them and dozens of other cats to starve. Big Cat Rescue provides lifetime care for these and over 100 other exotic cats. But we are much more. Big Cat Rescue is the leading advocate for big cats kept in captivity. We are on the front lines of the fight to end the abuse and abandonment of these majestic animals. Most big cats held in private hands live in deplorable conditions like those you see here. Current federal law allows keeping two tigers in a cage not much bigger than a parking space with nothing to do but pace. With thousands of private owners around the country, it is impossible to enforce the regulations that do exist. But this is changing. Gradually, more and more states are banning private ownership of big cats. Those bans are the only real solution because regulations requiring humane care simply can't be enforced. As more people learn the miserable fate of the cute cubs that exhibitors breed constantly so they can charge for photos and petting, more people are telling venues they don't want to see these abusive displays and more malls and fairs are banning these exhibits. Educating people so they know how they can help like this is a big part of our mission and it is working. Big Cat Rescue receives no government support. The food, medical care, and cage maintenance for just one tiger costs $5,000 each year. Providing the best home we can for over a hundred of these cats and continuing to educate the public and fight for better laws is only possible with the support of caring individual donors. Our supporters know that they can trust Big Cat Rescue because they can see the changes with their own eyes anytime they visit. And we are accredited by the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries and hold the highest rating given by Charity Navigator, having the highest overall score of any animal-based charity. Big Cat Rescue collaborates with groups such as the World Society for the Protection of Animals and with all of these organizations that are part of the International Tiger Coalition. Big Cat Rescue made it possible for the Coalition to have a booth at an international conference to protect wild tigers. We've won a number of awards, such as the Tampa Bay Business Journal's Favorite Black Tie Event, Second Best Fundraiser Event, and Favorite Retreat and Team Building Experience. PC Magazine listed Big Cat Rescue as one of their top 12 charities in 2011. And Toyota gave Big Cat Rescue a brand new Toyota Tundra. So, give you the key. Wow, a big day. Yes. Big Cat Rescue won the People's Choice Award every year that we participated. More than 50,000 unique user votes. That is a lot of votes on a website, believe you me. It's the, um, well, it's kind of like the American Idol version of the nonprofit world. This award really exhibits the connection and relationship that organizations have with their supporters and with their people in the community. It also allows citizens to honor the nonprofit that they feel most exemplifies the spirit of the community. A now three time winner of the WEDU People's Choice Award, Big Cat Rescue, a nonprofit educational sanctuary is devoted to rescuing and providing a permanent home for exotic, wild, undomesticated cats that have been abused, abandoned, 
or bred to be pets or retired from performing acts. The organization works to educate the public about these animals and the issues facing them in captivity as well as in the wild. We are both humbled and honored by these many awards and so grateful to the number of celebrities who have shown support for Big Cat Rescue. Animal Planet's Misadventure, Arch Deal, Barbara Niven, One Tank Trips, Bill Murphy, Bo Derrick gives Big Cat Rescue a 10, Chris Sims and Doug Williams from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Video Show Hosts Chad and Christy, County Commissioners and State Legislators, Donna Vivino and the cast from Wicked, huge stars like Harrison Ford who is helping to save tigers in the wild, celebrity chefs from Hell's Kitchen, world-renowned Jack Hanna, legendary Jack Harris, the iconic Jane Goodall, the cast and crew from the Jersey Boys, longtime supporter Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull, Jim Fowler, Congresswoman Kathy Castor, Leonardo DiCaprio, who donated $1 million to our International Tiger Coalition partner World Wildlife Fund to save tigers in the wild, cast and crew from the Tampa Bay Lightning, the cast and crew from Mary Poppins, Miss Florida winner 2008, the New York Yankees, Kate Walsh from Private Practice, newscaster Sue Zelenko, Tim Harris and Mike Weber from The Elephant in the Living Room, and Tippi Hedren from Shambhala. Big Cat Rescue has appeared more than 1,000 times in the media, including such high-profile shows as Animal Planet, Discovery, National Geographic, CNN, U.S. News and World Report, and so many others. All of those are right here on our website. We are so proud of the way we spend our donors' money that we actually post that online, including copies of our 990s and copies of our audited financial reports. Our website averages more than 1.5 million visitors per year. We report on all of the killings, maulings, and escapes by big cats and are considered an international resource for these statistics. If a big cat sneezes anywhere on this planet, you'll probably find out about it at BigCatRescue.org. High-profile partners, celebrity endorsements, awards and recognition, and the beautiful condition of our cats all are outward signs of a successful sanctuary. But like many things, it's the work that goes on behind the scenes that really makes the difference. We've always been fanatical about animal care, but in 2009, we found some tools that have really made it easier for us to track our success and to train our volunteers and staff. We document that training in videos, and so I've taken a few highlights from those videos to give you an overview of some of the work that goes on behind the scenes at Big Cat Rescue. These are just some of the ways that we communicate with our 100 plus volunteers. The capacity of the Google Education app to log observations is what makes it so crucial to our work here at Big Cat Rescue. Under observations, we have broken down the different types of observations into four different charts. And the reason for that is that we have over a hundred big cats. And so in order to be able to access just the parts that we need to access without seeing everything else all in one place, we've made it into four separate charts, but you could do this in any number of ways. So the one that our volunteers most access are the food and feces. And as the volunteers go out and clean the cages in the morning, they make notes as to anything that they see that's out of the ordinary. And then they come back in at the end of their shift and they can add items, which will then show up down here in this list. Where we find this the most helpful is under the cat's name. If a cat is not doing well and we need to go back and see if there's been any history with that cat not doing well, we can see here with Ace, I think she's a 20 year old bobcat, um, that she showed up on the chart July 29th, again August 5th, August 8th, August 6th, and this was detailing the food that she had left behind. And they can again choose by the date, the species, the cat's name, what the note is about, 
the cat's health, if the note detail that explains a little bit more about what was happening, who reported it, and whether or not it's been checked by the vet here or checked by the manager here. And this is how we make up a list for our vet. When she comes out, she comes out about twice a week at least, and we will print off this list for her of everything that still needs to be checked. After she's checked on the cat, then she will come in here and mark the item as checked. Same thing with the manager. As she goes out and checks on these things, she'll come back in and mark these as checked. And both of them can do that from their iPhone while they're checking on the cat. This is an embedded spreadsheet that has all of the cats, their date of birth, when they arrived, their identifier, if they have a microchip, what their age is this year, their sex, whether they've been neutered or spayed, claws or no claws. We also have daily med charts. These are for the cats who are daily getting medication. You can see the initials of the person who gave this cat her prednisone that day. If there are no initials, like this hasn't happened yet, then it'll be blank. So they'll be able to fill that in and put their initials. And we do this for all of the cats that have ongoing issues. All of the important info is kept on a page here where they have the contact information for their coordinators, um, all of the recent announcements will show up here and that is taken from the important updates. So as we add to important updates, it will show up here under recent announcements. We also include an emergency checklist which gives them the chain of command and how to handle emergencies. Depending on the volunteer's level of permissions, they have access to different calendars and what we ask our volunteers to do is to post when they are coming in to work on the calendars so that our coordinators can look at the calendar and see how many of the different level people they have for different activities. We have a very structured volunteer program so we have our interns, we have our highest level of keeper which is the green level, we have yellow level keepers which is intermediate and then we also have trainees, which are our red shirts. Our partners work all of our admin um, activities, such as manning the gift shop, sending out thank you notes, and going to outreach events. It's also very easy for people to come in and set up when they're going to be coming in. Like, say Chris comes in to clean every Tuesday at 7.30. He can set that up so that every Tuesday that will go onto the calendar. He doesn't have to enter it each time. We have a lot of things where we want to give over the ownership of them to our volunteers who sign up for different things. So like we have an enrichment committee and over here they can go to their own page with a link that's easy to find from the main site and they can do all of the edits, these people who are on the committee can do all of the edits to this site, they can make it look any way that they want, they can set up their charts, they can set up all of their surveys and everything on their own without, without changing the main website for everyone to see. We have a whole group of people here who are on the Operant Conditioning Committee and they have their own website that they can operate as well. We also have a big gala that we do each year called the Furball, and so here it tells who the Furball committee is, um, everything that we're asking them to do as far as donated items, the request letter that they would send out, the donation receipt letter, so that everybody can log in and download those things themselves. Volunteer appreciation meetings, we have minutes from those meetings, and so those are all kept archived here. And then this is our volunteer training, so how to clean a big cat, how to clean the cougars and get their certification, um, our enrichment program and the quiz that goes along with it so that they can study in advance, how to feed, the feeding tour guide, all of these kinds of things we keep here as resources so that anybody who is a volunteer can download those and read them and get up to date on them. Because our volunteer program is so structured, we have applications for moving up the ladder to the next level of responsibility and to the next level of their access in our site. And so all of those applications are here. We keep our organizational chart here, which reminds people of how the chain of command works and details that out for them. It describes their volunteer committee and what their duties may include, and the contact information for them, what the staff's roles are, the board of directors, the officers, advocates, who are people that are 
wanting to be volunteers but can't put in the minimum four hours per week, those people do not typically work on site for anything, but they do a lot of off site work for us. We have a site here where they can sign up and the different things that we have for them to do here. We have something called a staff meeting manager whereby all of our staff each week logs in under here what they have done for the week. In this way, we keep track of everything that's happened at the sanctuary and the date that it happened. Our awards are posted on this page. We list our save awards, um, our volunteer of the year awards. Each month there's four pages of awards for different things that people did. We want to make sure that everybody is given proper recognition. The volunteers have their own blog on this site where we encourage them to keep up with each other and post pictures and uh, pat each other on the back and really create a sense of community here where they have a voice in what's happening. Another very powerful element of this site is under more actions. You can select to have these sent to you as the pages are changed. So you can subscribe to page changes. And you can also, if you're the administrator, you can subscribe to all page changes universally. That can create an awful lot of emails to you, but I like it. What happens is you get an email that tells you about the update that was just posted on the website. And if you wanted to get more information about it, you could then click through to that update. There's usually a lot of resistance to change in the beginning. And we had an all out, knock down, drag out fight at Big Cat Rescue about implementing this system. A lot of people did not want this information to be so easily accessible by the entire volunteer community. A lot of people felt like it was going to be too hard for them to learn how to use these resources. And let me tell you, even the people who were the least likely to be able to learn how to use this system have proven to just every day they're logging in, they're making updates, they're putting themselves on the calendar, they're joining in conversations with each other, they're posting videos and photographs, they're sharing and communicating, and it's just been wonderful. And the level of care that we're able to provide to our cats now is so superior to anything that we were ever able to do on paper systems before. We wanted to help other sanctuaries achieve the spectacular success that we've enjoyed. And so we have offered online training and in-person workshops here at the sanctuary. In these training sessions, we have offered informational courses on volunteer training, recruitment, animal care, or social networking, every aspect of running a sanctuary, in addition to in-depth coverage on how people can set up their own intranet site like we use at bigcat.me. We have created a Google Sites template that includes all of our training and have made this available to many animal sanctuaries and animal rescue groups. Helping others and setting a good example enable us to achieve our mission, which is taking care of the animals that we have rescued and also ending the abuses that cause these animals to need rescue in the first place. Our goal is to end the trade in big cats as pets, as props, and for their parts. We can do it with help from people like you. On behalf of all of the cats at Big Cat Rescue, and all of the cats in captivity that need us to speak for them, we thank you for donating today to the best of your ability and making saving these majestic animals part of your life's legacy.